Saskatchewan. Uh, Mr. Broadhead, uh, just at the outset, I want to make something clear. At the first minister's meeting, Premier Mo expressed the view that the Emergencies Act was not wanted and not needed in Saskatchewan, correct? I, I believe he also said these the six items sounded reasonable. Uh, might maybe sounded reasonable, but wouldn't be perceived that way. Is that fair? I think that's fair. Yes, and and certainly did not want the act to apply to Saskatchewan. Correct. I think that was clear from the premier. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I'd like us to take a look at a document. Uh, so I'm going to ask the clerk to pull up SSM CAN four zeros. 6920. And while we're waiting, I'll let you know that this is an email from Ms. Charette, Clerk of the Privy Council, to actually everyone on this panel at 8.24 a.m. on February 14th. So we can see there 8.24 a.m. Uh, from Ms. Charette. Good morning, all. There's something that's privileged but then she is detailing uh, work that seems to be going on. Other products in train, FMM script with Q's and A's, comms news release and BG, which I expect means background, decision note for PM. Uh, then at the end, she says others still in the machine. Uh, Mr. Broadhead, when she says others still in the machine, can we take that as they were being worked on at that time? I don't act, it's not a very common phrase. I, could, I don't totally know what she was referring to here. Um, well, she says only one I have seen is FMM script. And then she says others still in the machine. So I, I take it that means those are in progress. Would that be fair? I, I don't really want to speculate on what the clerk of the Privy Council was thinking with that. Okay. Um, if we could go on to a different document then. Uh, well, before we do, does anyone else have a view on that that they're able to express? Are you specifically asking others still in the machine or just yes, the it, whole statement? Abs absolutely. It could mean a number of things. I, I don't think we can speculate. Okay. I'm going to ask the clerk to pull up the email that was referred to by Council for Alberta before. Uh, it's SSM. C A N four zeros two six six five. And this is the email thread that was entitled Presser Tomorrow. And I'd like us to go down to the bottom of the second page of the PDF. Right there is good. Uh, we can see an email from a person named Vanessa at the PMO um, to a number of other people, including others at the PMO, indicating presser tracking for 4 p.m. This is not to be shared publicly until FMM over and PM updated itinerary is available or is out, please. And uh, her her email there, of course, is is at 11.05, I believe, if we just go up. 11.05 a.m. So my understanding is the first minister's meeting would have been going on at that point. Um, Ms. Telford, was the purpose in delaying the announcement of the press conference so that the premiers would not be offended? No, the, um, there was a lot of work happening concurrently at the time and uh, to be ready for whatever scenarios and whatever decision ultimately the prime minister came to. And so Vanessa, um, who you named there, who's our excellent deputy director of communications, was making sure that all those tracks were, were heading in the right direction. Um, at any point, things could have been stopped and, uh, and things could have changed just as they were. Okay. I'd like us to go to the middle of the first page of this PDF, and it'll be an email at 1.43 p.m. There it is, from Vanessa again uh, to... Uh, David Taylor and, and others uh, stating, we just finished speech prep with PM. Alex is editing his remarks and will be able to share with this group as soon as he is done. So I, I gather at this point in time, 1.43 p.m. on the 14th, 
uh, the prime minister has already rehearsed his speech that he's going to be giving at 4.30 p.m. Is that fair? Speech prep, speech prep is our shorthand uh, for going through his remarks, uh, which we would have definitely returned to again uh, that afternoon. And so that means they would have done a once through with him on what things could look like. Okay. Um, he wasn't rehearsing two versions of a speech, was he? One where he was announcing the, inno the invocation of the Emergency Act and another where he wasn't, was he? To be clear, I wouldn't call it rehearsing. Um, the words speech prep literally mean preparing a speech. And so they would have been discussing what, what would have been going into the content in it, whether he was comfortable with where the drafts were at at this point. Okay. Um, we heard evidence from the clerk of the Privy Council some time ago, and her evidence was that the decision note was sent from the uh, PCO to the PMO at 3.41 p.m. on February 14th. <clears throat> um, we can pull up a document if you need me to, or I can just ask you to take my word for it. And if, if that's the case, um, are you familiar with the decision note? I, I gather you've likely seen it before. Is that fair? We're familiar with the decision note. Okay. Uh, a fairly lengthy document with a number of appendices, correct? Yes. And if it was received at 3.41 p.m., do we know at what time uh, it would have been returned with the Prime Minister's initials to the PCO? It was at some point between or, receipt yeah. and when the Prime Minister made the announcement. Okay, so it's obviously sometime before 4.30 in the afternoon then, correct? Mm -hmm. um, that would not have given the Prime Minister much, if any time, to have read all of that material. Would you agree with me? Well, a couple of comments. Uh, one, he did read the note. Two, the start time of the press conference it, it may be a bit absurd to dig in on the minutes, but the minutes are important here. I don't know that it started precisely at 4.30. I think there might have been some delay there. But after it was received, the Prime Minister did review the note, signed the note, made the announcement. And that signing of the note um, was came after the FMM, came after the opposition leader consultation, and that was the Prime Minister making the decision there before he announced it. Okay, I'm going to ask each of you a very similar question. Um, Ms. Telford, what I'd like to know is when you found out that the Prime Minister would be announcing the invocation of the Emergencies Act at the 4.30 p.m. press conference. He and I and would how? Have, he and I would have been discussing the possibility throughout the day. Until he signed the decision note, uh, there, was, there was nothing confirmed. Um, okay. Do we know when the announcement went out to the press gallery that the conference was going to be held at 4.30 p.m.? I don't know what time that went out. Mr. Cloud? I believe it went out earlier that afternoon, around, around or shortly after 1 o'clock. And the decision at that point to issue the itinerary was to notify media that the Prime Minister would have something to say. And it is absolutely possible that the Prime Minister could have decided not to proceed down this path before he addressed the media that afternoon. And it, it happens not infrequently on an issue that scenarios are planned, a track may be on a certain track, but a decision, a different decision is taken at a certain point, even at the last minute. So no, the decision was not taken until shortly before it was announced to media. Okay, I'll explore that just briefly if I can. Let's call the Emergencies Act track one, and let's call whatever the other um, decision could have been track two. Was there material prepared for a track two presentation at 4.30 p.m.? If a decision was taken not to invoke the Emergency Act on that day, the remarks and announcement would have been changed. They, you're they, well they over would your have time. Been. You're well over your time, been. so you're going to have to wrap up. Um, last question, but was there any draft material prepared uh, in the event that the decision was to not invoke the Emergencies Act? 
I'm, I'm not sure if there was. You would be familiar if there was, though, wouldn't you? But my point position? is, even if there wasn't a draft, this can be done quite quickly if, in order to redraft materials. Um, and it has happened before in different issues. We got very nimble during the pandemic. Um, where we were putting out advisories for things where we weren't sure what the content was going to be a couple of hours later. And that's what you need to do in times of crisis. Okay. I appreciate uh, the entire panel answering my questions. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, now we